Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Seboy Yahya from VR Division. Today we're going to talk about the mesh editing 3D modeling tools in Unreal Engine. Now you might ask, Yahya, I use Blender, Max, Maya. Why do I need these tools? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you have more questions, leave them below. Let's look at this from different perspectives. First, let's say you want to do quick 3D block out of uh, an environment you want to create. So instead of creating that block out in Blender, Max, Maya, wherever, you can do that now directly inside Unreal Engine. Then you can replace that block out with Quixel meshes or the final meshes. And of course, you can export that block out from Unreal to your tool, then send it back. So yeah, you can spend more time in the engine. Second, let's say you exported your project from your 3D tool of choice to Unreal Engine and you have some problems with the mesh, something like flipped faces, something like bad UVs, something like whatever. <laughs> Now you can do so many operations inside Unreal Engine to fix or to edit your meshes without the need to go back to your 3D tool of choice, fix it there, then export it back to the engine. So this will save you so much time editing your meshes directly inside the engine instead of going back and forth between the engine and your tool of choice. And lastly, let's look at this from the perspective of someone who does not no Blender or Max or Maya or Cinema 4D or any 3D tool. There are people now who are learning Unreal Engine and they know only Unreal Engine. Writers, directors, teachers, uh, so many people are getting into this with no background in 3D. So it would make sense to do everything directly inside the engine. That's enough. Let's get started. So I will uh, use Unreal 5.1. I'm sure there are many improvements on what we had earlier from 5.0 i'll click launch to open the unreal project browser and i will go to games category choose a plank template feel free to use from any template you like i keep things simple and go with the most basic simple template I'll give my project a name modeling no need to start your content but it's okay now let's wait for the engine all right welcome to the engine get some messages here depending on your gpu or engine version i'm gonna ignore this let's just click dismiss here now where can we find these tools well if we go to the editor modes here on the top at by default we have selection mode if you click here you should see the modeling mode now if you don't have this modeling mode we can go to edit plugins and then here we can search for modeling and we will find modeling tools editor mode now this is enabled by default so just in case if you don't see it you can find it here so once this is enabled we can middle mouse click here on plugins to close that window and let's take a look so you may have a different layout and i'm gonna click on this blue corner here just to enable this and you may have this like here this is how I remember it from earlier versions. If you have this, I like to click hold my mouse and move it to the left so I can snap it to the left on the screen. Select also the modeling here and put it next to it so they are next to each other. Then I can select this part, select this part. Let's get familiar with this. Here on the top we have the shapes, so basic primitive shapes, box, sphere, cylinder and whatnot. We also have the option to create our geometry from different methods so we can draw a polygon and then extrude it we can draw a path we can do path revolve we're gonna explore these and if we have static meshes selected all of these will be enabled for different operations now this is in here poly model this cube grid is actually very very interesting if you click on it we will see some sort of grid so let's go to the center of the world i'm going to right click to move around and then press w to go to this area and you will see this sort of grid so if you click and drag then we can click on pull multiple times it's up to you or push this is the opposite you can slide back so you can move this uh, selection then do another pull so this is a very interesting way to do the modeling. You can select here, then click pull. Click like so. This is very fun. 
the way I recommend getting familiar with these tools is to go to this mode and experiment with all with everything you see here and also the options here. So here on the left we have the tools and on the right we have the options based on the tool we have selected. So let's say we want to create a box. I'm going to click on the box, but don't forget to click accept sometimes because if you don't click accept, you may lose what you've created. So now we have a box selected and by default we have a box by 100, 100, 100 units and we can click and place this box wherever we like. Here's a tip. We can go to the grid value here where it says 10 and we can set it, let's say, to 100. And now it moves by 100 units. You click, it will create a box and we can move this box the way we like or we can modify it on the fly. And if we like what we see, we can click accept. Nice. Same for the sphere. We can create a nice little cute sphere or big cute sphere. Just it's up to you. You can create cylinder cone and whatnot. I'm gonna select now this sphere and let's see what other options we have here. We have in poly model, we have poly edit. If I click here, you will see the four seams. So I'm gonna cancel. You would see like this type of sphere have these uh, edges, I would say, that are slightly visible. Yeah. So if you go to poly edit, we can select poly groups between these edges and here's an option if you go to sphere and if you go to poly group mode we can switch this from per face to per shape or per quad so if you go for example per quad and create the exact same sphere i'm gonna click click accept then go to poly edit you will see that each face here or quad got its own poly group and this is important at the start like when you create your mesh and that's important because let's say we want to edit this sphere you can select this face and move it up or down like right and we can perform operations like extrude offset and all that good stuff i'm gonna click accept and i'm gonna select this sphere and i'm gonna do go to poly edit and as you can see i can select per quads here so I can have more control over how my selection is and what type of operations I'm doing. And by pressing and holding shift, you can add multiple faces to your selection. And now let's do push pull, for example, which is dope. It will extrude along the faces, I believe. You can try again, so do this. By clicking and dragging, you can select vertices and whatnot. I'm going to keep it simple for now. And let's do extrude. And you notice the difference here. The extrude is like straight. It's not getting bigger. But by using the push and pull, it's also extruding this and also like pulling it in other directions. Let's go back here. Select the sphere. Poly edit. And you have all these options to play with. So I'm not gonna dive deeper. There will be more tutorials where we like dive deeper in each of these. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. Let's do something else. Let's go to poly extrude and let's create a new shape. So by just clicking, you can move this green line. So you can have it like so. And you can, of course, disable the snapping on the corners if you don't want snapping, but I like this. So let's say I'm making a wall. Click like so. And now, when I move my grid, each time it's 100 units. So we can click here, make it 10 units. And zoom in a little. So 0, 10 units, 20 units, 30, 40. So that's like, let's say, a wall with thickness of 40 units. And the way I'm moving, so right click and ASDW to move around again. And I scroll up and down a lot to speed up or slow down my camera. I feel very comfortable moving in the engine this way. Q and E to move up and down. Now, I'm going to move this here. Make sure it's a straight line. And I can close the shape. And once we close the shape, we need to define the height. And we can define the height by moving the mouse up and down. Or 
if we want the exact same height as the surface we can just put the mouse here and you will see this snap here to set the exact same height and now once we click complete we have nice little cute wall with the same height as this nice little cube it's not little but you know <laughs> anyway path extrude let's take a look click 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 and click once you are satisfied with your selection you can click again at the end here and you can set the width for your path let's say like this and set the height for it and i'm gonna keep the height very very short it's kind of hard sometimes it's okay get used to it and there we go you can click complete let's say we want to do something else so i'm gonna select this move it here on the side and you have a smooth you click smooth it's like adding turbo smooth and we can add how many steps we want so zero step one two three four it's adding more topology on top of our sphere so we can click accept and if we press alt 2 we can go to wireframe mode so if we click here on subdivision give it a few seconds to load we can ha specify how many subdivisions levels we want so if you, zero there are no subdivisions one two three you will see the mesh is getting denser and denser it's kind of hard to see so i'm gonna set the camera like this press zero and then press three you can see we have much more meshes and that's nice click accept And let's take a look. It's crazy. Looks like uh, the head of a cat by accident. So let's delete it. Now, one of my favorite operations is Boolean. So I can select this, all right? So we have one mesh here. And you will notice some of these options are grayed out. This means we can't use them for now. What if we hold Ctrl and select another shape? You will see. Other options now are grayed out and we have the new options now enabled. I'm gonna click here, here, press F to focus selection and let's just find nice angle, right? Like this. So we select now these two shapes, then we can mesh boolean and we can difference A minus B or B minus A intersection or union. A minus B or B minus A depending on, it depends usually on your selection. So I'm gonna click cancel. I'm gonna click this one first and then this one. And I'm going to press on mesh boolean. There you go. As you can see, this is mesh A and this is mesh B. And you can move the mesh around to see the result in real time, which is beautiful. Let's say like this and click accept give it a second to save and there we go now before we wrap up this lesson because i don't want it to make it too long i could spend days talking about the modeling tools and how we can use them differently i'm going to make a duplicate of this mesh and i'm going to make another duplicate of this mesh and this mesh here i'm going on the very top and i will select under create mesh duplicate this will make this mesh unique. So if we press here and just click accept, let's uh, bring this mesh or let's just make quick uh, tourist this time. Donut, let's call it. Click accept and do the same. Let's do operation boolean. Click here or actually no, let's do uh, poly edit. Select this face and just move it, right? Click accept. As you can see, because this and this, we duplicated these by holding Alt, they are instances. And if you press Ctrl B, it will show you that mesh in under content, generated meshes. Ya boy Yahya. You will see it here. And this mesh now, if you press Ctrl B, it's separate mesh. Now, I want just to highlight this. Don't forget to mesh duplicate your meshes before you do operations. And the final thing, you can notice here we have the star T 
thingy on the corner. This means that these meshes are not saved. And if the engine crashes or something goes wrong, you're gonna get angry. So I always prefer to, or every now and then, select these or select one of them. Press Ctrl S to save that specific mesh. Or if you are just here, press Ctrl Shift S. It will uh, start by asking me to save this map. Let's say test map. But also it's going to save everything. So no need, you see, the start is gone. You can also, of course, like select them, press Ctrl S. And yeah, I'm gonna shift one will take you back to selection mode. Shift five will take you to the modeling mode. One of my favorite shortcuts. I'm lying, I have too many favorite shortcuts. All right, so this was your boy Yahya from VR Division. I hope you found this useful. I look forward for your questions and I look forward to see what you will create. Join us on Discord. I look forward to seeing you very, very, very soon. Take care.